I'm Dave Shaner with here at the Stony Brook Wildlife Sanctuary representing the Norfolk County Beekeepers Association. I've been a beekeeper for about seven years now and Jessica Watson, volunteer coordinator here at Stony Brook, approached Norfolk County Beekeepers Board of Directors for um, some possible funding to replace the observation hive that was here originally. There were some limitations with the, uh, the observation hive. It was four frames single stacked, and I'll, I'll walk into some of the limitations. So when she approached Norfolk County Beekeepers for some appropriation to replace the one observation hive that was here, we talked about it through the board, and after a few months of research into the type of observation hive that would be of interest to Stony Brook, I looked online to see where we could buy one for the association here and really didn't find any plans that were conducive to the requirements that Stony Brook had from an educational standpoint. So I approached the Norfolk County Beekeepers Club and suggested that I would build an observation hive for Stony Brook. And some of the limitations that we had originally with a single uh, four frame single stack is that the entire hive had to be taken outside to be manipulated to change frames as the hive grew. So one of the requirements was something that didn't have to be taken outside, two people to be involved, to take it outside, open up the covering, remove a single frame, bees flying everywhere. Something that was simple and had space for the bees to grow. My design, um, as I mentioned, I was looking at plans online to purchase one for Stony Brook, but there were pros and cons of each design that was out there. So as I decided to build one, I uh, worked with the pros and cons of each and created my own plan. There was a, an observation hive with modular design, five modules in here, each one two frames wide, total of 10, which gave them uh, twice the space of the original hive. And one, another limitation was the, the dark space that's required for beehives. With two frames wide, 50% of the beehive is in dark space on the interior side of it. And then you have 50% on the exterior that can be observed by the students and, and visitors. So the unique design with this, this setup is, that, like I mentioned, it's modular. Each one of these modules can be taken out independently and changed as the hive grows. And to do that, These, these shims were created that you can slide slide between the modules and the purpose of, of sliding with putting the shims in here is to segregate the bees in the respective areas. The bees will be segregated from the shim down and then between the shims that block off the bees. So there's no chance of escape for the bees. So as you pull the module out, now you've isolated those bees independently in each module. And being segregated here, the bees are, are locked from here down and there's no chance of escape. This top module also doubles as a honey super. And from an educational standpoint, you can see how the, a real life beehive would work. Is there's an integrated queen excluder. So the queen will lay her eggs from here down and only the forage bees can pass through these slots and deposit honey in the top chamber and then you'd reinsert it the same way. And once it's inserted and segregated, you can pull out your shims, and now it's a complete hive again. 
This observation hive is made of red oak with a natural propolis stain. Propolis is a natural occurring product of the beehive. It's, um, it's a resin made from trees and tree sap. So I extracted the, the, the propolis, um, brought, extracted the oils with um, an alcohol and used, a, used denatured alcohol for the stain. Let that sit for several days for the stain. For these interior modules, these are made out of pine, select pine, not free, brass recessed handles to, to pull each module out. And the glass on the side is made from Lexan, which is a polycarbonate, not glass, not tempered glass, and not plexiglass. The advantage that it brings to, the, to us for education is the Lexan is crack proof and break resistant. One, the other limitation of the old hive, it was made with plexiglass, which degrades over time. It cracks and has the potential to break. It's also UV protected, so it will not degrade by the sunlight coming in through the windows. Um, it won't fade through the UV light as well. And if you, as you look close to here, to the corners, the, the glass is recessed in grooves. So it won't be able to be pushed in. And across the, the sides, there's some quarter rounds that it's adhered to the glass so there's no flexibility. It's very rigid for each of these panels so that the young, wandering children, education, as they push on it, there's no flexibility. It won't crack or push in and it won't break. So it's very safe and secure from an um, education standpoint. The bees will travel from the outside through a tunnel and then come up through the center and will work their way through the top. We also have an integrated feeder at the, in the top section of this where in the winter, in the fall, the spring, you can feed the bees if, when there's no flowers, flora outside. You can insert uh, sugar water here for the bees and you can also double that as a ventilation aspect as well. You can use the, the cap to ventilate or to feed the bees. Um, in all, from design to concept, it's about 85 hours of work time to put this thing together. It started out, as, as, a, as I mentioned with Jessica Watson, approaching the club. I built some prototypes. I reviewed them with Doug and Jessica in the beginning with some adapting changes. And from that, uh, we showed the, the, the progress and got the approvals of, of an education standpoint. And then the final build is what you see here today. If anyone has any questions on this project or the plans or design, feel free to contact me through Stony Brook and we'll be in touch. So I'm enticing a bee to build out here by making this sweet. It's got a really nice purple flavor. So because I'm putting a clean cage in here, I want her mingled in between the brood. Chambers. And so I'm actually going to move the one, two, drawer of frames. So instead of two drawers, I'm doing three drawers.
So there's a little cork right there. Oh, brown one. Right here. And this is all sugar candy. So it's a way of slowly introducing the queen into a new hive by um, letting them smell her pheromones. Because if they see her right away, they'll ball her and kill her. They'll make a little ball around her and then just kill her. So we're trying to say, hey, this is your queen. Um, be nice. And time takes care of that. Oh, that was a bee or two. Yeah. 